I don't even know where to begin with a video like this. <laughs> hey, how about here? Hey, folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. That's some retro McRae right there, isn't it? Um, okay, I, I, I don't even know where to begin, like I said, but... Um, <laughs> Okay, so first of all, let me say thank you to to everybody out there who uh, sent me DMs and private messages, sending me links and and all that to this to this story. Uh, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know my beef with Tony Moran. So who are we talking about today? We're talking about Tony Moran. Who's Tony Moran? You might ask. In case you don't know, well, he is the unmasked Michael Myers at the end of John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. That's who he is. That is Tony. Moran. That is his claim to fame. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that that's his claim to fame. That really is the only thing on his resume. That's not a slight, right? That's just an, an objective, verifiable, measurable fact. It is the only thing of really any sort of importance on his resume in terms of pop culture relevance. Okay? So, um, nothing wrong with that. That's pretty cool. Now, you would think, I'm unmasked by this amazing, right? Okay. Now, before I jump into all that, because, again, if you've been following me for any length of time, you should know my issues with Tony Moran. But let me jump over to the article that was um, uh, brought to my attention. I'm going to read you the article, and then I'm going to give my thoughts, okay? Uh, so buckle up, grab some popcorn, and get ready. I'm going to try and handle this as objectively and as maturely as I possibly can, okay? Because I, I find these things interesting not just to rant and rave about and get emotional about, but also try to instill some logic in there as well, because I find these things interesting from a sociological perspective. So anyway, let's jump over here. This was sent to me. A bunch of you guys were DMing me. And, and again, thank you. I appreciate it. Always remember, if I don't get to something or I don't mention something right away, it's likely not because I haven't seen it. Uh, although this I had not seen when you guys message me. But nine times out of 10, it's not necessarily because I haven't seen it. It's because I'm just too busy. Today, I was very, very busy. Um, but I appreciate you sending it to me. Uh, so let's jump over and uh, see what we're talking about. So this comes from MovieWeb. Okay. MovieWeb.com. It says, actor Tony Moran badmouths Halloween makes outrageous claims about Carpenter and crew in video. So uh, we have Tony Moran made his claim to fame with mere seconds of screen time as the unmasked Michael Myers in John Carpenter's Halloween and has been telling some pretty tall tales ever since. That is true. There's a photograph there of a young Tony Moran and a young John Carpenter. Any regular attendee of horror conventions already knows if original unmasked Michael Myers actor Tony Moran is in attendance, you're going to hear some wild stories. Those crazy tales recently resurfaced in a video compilation of Moran sharing some of his best or worst, depending on your view of the matter, um, anecdotes about the classic 1978 slasher classic Halloween. You have two classics in there. Uh, he tells some tales out of school. Excuse me. He tells some tales out of school about what happened behind the scenes with John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis that may surprise shock and anger some fans. He also goes after chip star Eric Estrada and Happy Days favorite Scott Baio while also going on a tirade of verbal assaults against Rob Zombie's Michael Myers Tyler Maine. He also purchases excuse me, he also punches excuse me, hard at William Shatner but is anything Moran's, but is anything Moran has to say the truth? Or is the actor just being braggadocious and purposely uh, crude simply to get attention? You be the judge. And the video is there. I will also provide the video in the link below. For those who don't know, Tony Moran, the older brother of Aaron Moran, Joni from Happy Days, played Michael Myers in John Carpenter's original Halloween for a few fleeting seconds in the film. When Laurie, Jamie Lee Curtis, rips off the mask of the shape played by Nick Castle in 98.99 up... Uh, a percent of the film, which is essentially true, to reveal her brother's true face. Those few seconds of screen time in the slasher, in the slasher, excuse me, which is hailed as a seminal, cla a seminal classic, have provided Moran with vast opportunities worldwide to profit from the intense fandom that has surrounded Halloween for over four decades. This new video popped up on YouTube earlier in the week, and it has left many Halloween fans shaking their heads. Moran is seen in the video at various um, conventions making some outrageous claims about the original Halloween production, including alleged misconduct from John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis on and off the set. He takes no issues attacking Michael Myers actor Tyler Maine from the Rob Zombie films, constantly claiming his names, 
excuse me, constantly calling him names that we can't print here. And that is true. The Michael Myers actor even goes as far as to spoil certain aspects of Blumhouse's Halloween kills. Eh, I didn't really get that, but fair enough. In which he has been privy to certain details, apparently. The video is wild stuff. It's unclear whether Moran is being truthful here or if he's merely playing uh, to the crowd. We're going to talk about that. Hamming it up for the camera and making a spectacle of himself to lend uh, to lend credit to his place in the franchise's history. His actions clearly elicit more attention than just an actor at a convention, excuse me, than more than just an actor at a convention table quietly signing photos for fans with the occasional nod and pleasant greeting. Walking away from a... Con- Walking away from a conversation with Tony Moran, you'll certainly remember it over anything else that happens at a horror con, but that might not that might not necessarily be a good thing. Throughout the video, Tony Moran bashes Halloween as an indie piece of garbage that he never thought anyone would ever watch. He blasts the hardcore fan base, telling them they are all nothing but a bunch of nerds, right to their faces. He describes one autograph seeker with complete vitriol, bashing the fan as a complete loser. He does this in front of an audience who just paid to obtain the man's autograph. He clearly has a well-rehearsed act, much like a stand-up comedian. That is very true. And that is the article from movieweb.com. Again, the link to the video is in the description. Please uh, watch the video and then come back and listen to me. Okay, so what do I have to say on this? Well, Again, I'm going to approach this from as objectively as I possibly can, okay? But I have a lot I want to say on this, all right? Now, I, again, if you've watched me for any length of time, you know my issues with Tony Moran. I don't know the man personally. I've never met the man. I've never had a conversation with him. However, I do know people who do know him, who have met him, and, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And uh, let's just say that he's, well, he's a fucking asshole. And he's so much of an asshole that he calls himself an asshole and he seems to be proud of it, like it's some sort of sense of accomplishment. <laughs> I, I'm an asshole, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm an asshole. Good for you, Tony. That's a, You worked hard, you know. It, it's, 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 it's hard to be an asshole in this day and age, isn't it? So, it's so hard to be an asshole. Like, it's like, it's, it's like, like I'm supposed to think that's, that's amazing or something or that's impressive somehow. Anyway. Now, the video is edited to make Tony look like an asshole. It it picks up the, the again, there's very little context around it. There is context. There's some nuance, but, but not a lot. And I don't say that to make excuses for Tony. I'm just saying that when you watch the video, it's very clear that, yes, this is edited in the ways that a media outlet would edit something to make somebody look bad. The problem is Tony is just bad. So I don't feel any sort of sense of... Uh, um, misleading the audience. It's just when you pick up Tony's buzz, uh, sorry, buzz moments and his hot points and you string them together, it looks really bad, right? Um, and it is. But I just want to say that it, it, it's, it's very clear that the, the, um, uh, the video is edited that way. Um, so listen, what's my beef with Tony Moran in case you don't know? Very quickly, again, my beef is how he handles himself in regards to a being a Halloween alum and and the character of Michael Myers. Tony Moran is the unmasked Michael Myers in John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. That is it. No more, no less. Zilch, zero, nada. He's never appeared in, in any other Halloween film, period, uh, as Michael Myers. Tony Moran also doesn't have really anything else on his resume. That's not a slight. That's just a fact. He retired from acting around 30 years old. He went and became a mortgage broker or something like that. He, it's very apparent. He doesn't like the Hollywood game. Uh, yes, there is definitely a game that you have to play. There, there, yes, of course, there is a certain game you have to play. If you, That's just the nature of the business. It, 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 you know, and, and he clearly doesn't want to play that. And he's like, fuck that, fuck whatever. And it's like, I get it. I totally get it. And he probably wasn't getting much elsewhere. And he's probably a dick. He's probably always been a dick and uh and he retains like fuck i'm out of here and he retired you know and of course he had he's had some alcohol issues he's had drug issues we know this halloween 1978 is his only thing on his resume that is relevant at all in terms of pop culture status he is unmasked michael myers and john carpenter's halloween one of the most iconic horror movies in the history of motion pictures one of the most iconic villains in the history of horror and he is the unmasked version of that character i have, have always thought that that is amazing that's amazing. You should own that. You should be proud of that. You should at any, I mean, if that was me at any given point, I would be like screaming at the top. I'm unmasked my 
Michael Myers, man. Woohoo! It's pretty cool, isn't it? Right? Own it. Be proud of it. Okay? Be proud of it. But he doesn't do that. More often than not, not all the time, not all the time, as you will see in some of this video, but more often than not, he misleads interviewers. Uh, convention posters and banners just say, you know, uh, original Michael Myers. Uh, come see the original Michael Myers. When you hear him talk about Halloween, he talks about it like he was on set for, you know, the entire four weeks. And then he was there and it was this and it was that and it was this and, you know, while well, we were doing this. And we were, dude, you were there for probably like fucking uh, an evening. You know what I mean? So, you know, if, if, if they don't correct him, if they don't ask, he doesn't say anything. And it's very obvious why he does it. You know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why he does it. But as somebody, as a professional um, voice actor, as somebody who has worked in the business for over 20 years, I can tell you that artistic integrity is extremely important to me. And I can tell you that most artists, it's extremely important to. Now, I'm pretty sure that Nick Castle and Carpenter and most of the Halloween alum probably don't give a fuck that, that Tony Moran is doing that. And why? Because Tony Moran is a dick. And everyone knows he's a dick. And everyone knows he's an asshole. And he's a piece of shit. And he's not worth your time. Everyone knows this, so they don't really care, right? If it was somebody they actually respected, somebody with value, you know, um, um, walking around saying these things, well, they would probably care. Nick Castle would probably be like, well, that's kind of weird. I mean, why is that guy? Because he has more weight. He has more influence. He has more impact, right? Tony Moran, no, and that's why nobody cares. No other Halloween alum says anything or cares because everybody knows he's a dick anyway. Um, but it's the principle of it. It's the principle of it that's always bothered me. It's the principle. It would be like Sebastian Shaw, you know, the uh, guy who played unmasked Darth Vader, if he was still alive today during this convention era, running around to all sorts of conventions and posters and banners advertising him as Darth Vader from Star Wars. It's like, well... Yes, but not exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's the principle of it. He was unmasked Darth Vader. He wasn't just Darth Vader. He was unmasked. And that's amazing in and of itself and something to be proud of. You know, and yeah, maybe if Tony Moran wasn't a, a dick and a fucking asshole, uh, he, you know, might get a clue and be like, hey, maybe I could, you know, if I wasn't a dick and I uh, showed a little more humility and, and, and you know, I, maybe, uh, you know, I, this is really cool. Maybe, maybe other avenues would open up for me if I wasn't a dick and, and I showed some humility and, and I was actually, you know, maybe, maybe not, but maybe, who knows, you know, who knows? No. No, no. Clearly, he he has uh, huge resentment issues and 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 uh, uh, just uh, the toxicity that he brings. And, and trust me, I've heard stories from reputable, trusted sources. The toxicity that he, you know, often brings to any panel or convention, you know, other Halloween alum that they, they hear. He, I mean, there. Well, I mean, there are some people that that won't even go if he's there. Um, let's just put it that way. So in this video, he go, it's, it's edited. It's different clips from the different conventions he's been at. And it will become very apparent to you how Tony handles himself and how he's not afraid to say, ah, I thought it was a piece of shit. I thought it was this and that. And he's saying this and he's accusing John Carpenter of beating Deborah Hill. He, he said that Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, you know, was fucking everybody on set pretty much. Now, is that true? I don't know. I mean, I have absolutely no idea. There's no evidence to suggest it. There's no evidence to suggest that John Carpenter was beating Deborah Hill, and that's why she was wearing her sunglasses on set. Was he? I don't know. If we really want to look at this objectively and remove our emotional attachment as fans out of it, was he? I don't know. Do you know? No, you weren't there. I have no idea. But there's no evidence for it. As far as I know, there's no evidence for it. There's no evidence. I mean, this is the first time we're hearing about this. This is the first time I've heard that, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis was was banging everybody on. So I haven't heard this. And it's coming from a guy who's an incredibly unreliable source. I mean, he is the, you know, the 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 fucking uh, weekly world news. Remember that paper? Uh, or the National Enquirer or something of 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 uh, Halloween fandom. I mean, I mean, who not? I mean, so you can't you can't just buy his word because 
of his approach and something in this movie web article, uh, which I agree with it, it, I, I do think that he's putting on an act. I don't think it's an act. It's a disingenuous act, but I do think he is hamming it up. And the reason why he's hamming it up is because he's got nothing else to fall on. He was unmasked Michael Myers in one movie for three seconds and that's it. Now, if he had played his cards right, okay, and he had been a nice guy, humble guy, bought into it, was generous, you know, just a not, just a different person, essentially, then you wouldn't see this behavior. And what I mean by that is he's playing it up because he knows he doesn't fucking belong there. He knows that. Now, in principle, he belongs there in terms of his role. But who he is and how he's handled himself, he doesn't belong there. So what does he do? He tries to get you on his side by being cool. I'm going to swear a lot. Fuck this. Fuck that. Cocksucker. Do this. Do that. And these guys be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's what he's doing. He's, he's, he's got no substance. Because there's nothing there. There's no, you know, so he's got to make up stories to make himself feel more important than he really is. When in actuality, and the irony of it is that, dude, your role is iconic in the world of Halloween. <laughs> Not in general, but I mean, in the world of Halloween, the fact that people want to come and get your, it's cool, man. It's cool. He's doing it in my estimation, like I said, because he's got nothing else. You can only talk about his role for, 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 for so long. What else is he going to, in reality, he was there for an evening. How much more is he going to say? What other anecdotal stories does he have about Halloween that isn't, it was fun. I wasn't really crazy on it. I called my agent. I went down. We did it for a couple of hours and then I left. That's basically his substance to Halloween. Nothing wrong with that, but that's what it is. So he's got to invent emotional sort of uh, 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 strings that an audience can glom onto and tell outlandish stories. And I'm an asshole. That's who I am, you know. And he's overcompensating massively. That's not an excuse for his behavior, by the way. Like I said, not an excuse at all. But that's what he's doing. He's overcompensating. It's like, shut the fuck up, Tony. Just shut up. You know, sh like, really, dude? It doesn't impress me. It doesn't, not that he's trying to impress me, but I'm just saying it doesn't impress and it shouldn't impress you either. You know, but you get people who are less experienced in the business, uh, you know, who are just fans, have regular jobs. And when they meet somebody like Tony, it's a big deal for them. And then, you know, when they sit down with it, I mean, I can tell watching the video when he started calling Tyler Maine a cocksucker and, and a derogatory term towards, you know, people who are gay, um, I can certainly tell that those two guys were uncomfortable. Young guys, I don't know who they were. Maybe they had a horror podcast or something. They felt uncomfortable. You can tell. Now, if that was me, you know, with the experience I have working in the business, meeting all sorts of people in my life, I would have been like, yeah, this is done. Like, Tony, I don't, like, don't say that. Like, we're, we're done. I don't give a fuck. I would I'd say it to him. No, no issues. But when you get people that are less experienced, they're taken back by it. They're like, I don't understand why this guy I look up to is like saying all these words. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you could tell. You could tell. You know, but somebody needs to say, Tony, fuck off. Shut up. Get out. And I know a few people who've done that. And if you're watching, you know who you are, by the way. And he needs more people to do. He needs to have people stop inviting him to conventions. You know, until he, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve to be in that environment until he understands. He doesn't deserve to be in that environment until he can instill some humility, apologize and say, you know what? I've been a real fucking dick. And I have resentment towards a lot of things in my life. And it's no excuse. That, yeah, I, I'm, this is shit. Like I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't be like this. You know, I shouldn't be treating fans like this. I shouldn't be telling these crazy stories just to make myself feel more important than I really am because that's what he's doing because he's got nothing else. He's got no stories. He's got nothing. 
And for whatever reason, he's still 14 years old, you know, in the late sixties, early seventies, however old he would have been at, or you know, whatever time it would have been when he was 14, hanging out with his buddies, smoking some dope. And, you know, it's like, dude, you're not, you're not fucking 14. Grow the fuck up. Like you can't like people paid to see you. And if you don't like it, then get the fuck out. It's so simple. So, I mean, that's always been my issue with him. And you can see it. He's got nothing. So, he invents this, and I, I'm not saying it's not real, but he puts that on. Oh, it's real. But he's, he's overcompensating so much and telling these and swearing and cocksucker and, you know, this and that and, you know, fuck it, fuck it. Because he thinks, because he's, he, he, he's, he's juvenile. He's like a 60-year-old guy who hasn't grown up. He's like that uncle that you don't want over because he's 60 and he acts like he's 15. And you find him out in the garage hanging with your son smoking a joint. You're like, Uncle Bob, what are you doing? You're 60. The fuck you doing? I'm just having a beer with my little nephew here. He's that guy. That's who he is. But it's like, yeah, dude, in like a professional environment, you, you can't do that. He's the kind of guy, because his mentality, he only relates to younger people who, sh who share that same kind of, huh. you know what I'm saying? So you'll probably see him hanging around with those kind of people. He's not going to be hanging around with the mature people that can tell him to fuck off. He's not going to do that. He's going to be hanging around with the kids. The kids who think he's cool. There's no time for that, man. Now listen, I mean, the damage he's done is, is crazy. And I'm not just talking about this video. I'm talking about damage he's done in, in the past with, you know, with all sorts of, of people. And, you know, I think it's too late for him to change because I don't think he gives a fuck. And I think he likes, he likes being that guy and that guy. Okay. But you know, at the end of the day, more people need to know about it and how he handles it. And just don't go see him. I hate to say that, you know, but I mean, don't go see him. Don't ask, don't ask for his autograph. Don't get your picture taken with him. Don't go see him. And if Tony is watching this, dude, I meant every single fucking thing I said in this video. You have an opportunity or had an opportunity to be something really cool. Yeah, Hollywood can suck, dude. It can. I know. Hollywood can fucking suck. Absolutely. But you're on the outside now. And you had an opportunity to be something to somebody. Yeah, three seconds of screen time. Maybe you're pissed off. Ah, the fucker, this is my claim to fame. Then don't do it. Then don't go. Like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't go to a convention and be a fucking dick to people paying to get your autograph who may not know that you're a dick and are so excited to see you. It's a dick move. You're an asshole. And you know you're an asshole because you call yourself an asshole. But that's not cool. That's, that's, that's like, that's juvenile shit. I know I'm an asshole. Yeah, I'm an asshole. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's supposed to impress me or something? It doesn't. It doesn't. Because you're a dime a dozen, dude. There's nothing original about that shtick or that act or the way you're handling yourself at all you're a dime a dozen with that act but you know what's not a dime a dozen humility greeting fans with a smile taking time to meet with somebody going that extra mile not all the time it's not it's not expected that 
you know, somebody would do that all the time. It's not, it's not practical. But instilling humility, being polite, saying good things, or not saying anything at all. But I guess you never got the attention you deserved. I don't know if it's because you lived in your sister's shadow and you have some resentment to that. I don't know. Or if you're just an old man still thinking you're a tough guy. I'm a tough guy. I just see shit like that and it's it's just opportunity wasted. Because like I said, you could have, you could have, if you, I, I don't know if you have the intelligence to do this, but you could have had a second career. I don't mean you would have ended up, you know, with Hugh Jackman in some Marvel movie or something or DC film. Or, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you had come along and you started doing the conventions and you got to know people again and, you know, you may have wound up on a couple of movies, my man. And you may have had a role that was also not just unmasked Michael Myers. Maybe by now you could have, you could have something else on your resume that isn't just unmasked Michael Myers. Maybe you could have played a villain in, you know, a couple of really hot, popular independent horror movies or something like Hatchet or Terrifier. Maybe you ended up, you know, a, do you know what I'm saying? Maybe. Maybe not, but maybe. But, but you'll forever be, you will forever be the guy who has unmasked Michael Myers, who was an ungrateful jackass and walks around expecting people to pay him money to sign a fucking photo that you don't give a shit about. Well, then why should people, why should people go to the convention to meet you? Why should people, I don't fucking know. It's fucking stupid, man. But if they're there, I'll take their fucking money. It's because you're a dick. You're a dick. You're a dime a dozen. And it's, 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 it's not impressive. It's not impressive. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Did you read the article? Did you watch the video? What do you think? Comment below and let me know your thoughts. I would love to know. If you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. That's where I tend to post in the meantime, in between time, and I'm not posting here. All my links are in the description. Check them out until your heart's content. And when your heart is content, check them out again. Uh, that's going to do it for me. So uh, yeah, just, uh, just yeah. don't be a dick. You know, just try not to be a dick in life. Punch up instead of punching down. Cheers.